Casey? Yes. Man, look at number four. A great name. John Love. Number one, James Tipton. Mr. Watkins, you know the drill. What was James Tipton's previous occupation considering his first week ever with the company? He did $9,607. So he had some training from somewhere. No. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of it. I don't it think right that's now. an acceptable he, answer. Was it uh, was it Lipton's Lipton Ice T's brother Tipton? Change his name. <laughs> well, I think Give me another. what I would have gone with is that it was definitely he was part of the Tipton family, which later became Lipton Ice T because after they went through several mm. surveys with consumers, they realized that Tipton was not as favorable to the consumer as Lipton. Okay. So it's, that makes a, sense. He was a tea salesman. Is, what, is that what you're going with? Sure. All right. If anybody like actually knows. I like Heather Willoughby too. That's a cool name. Yeah, Heather Willoughby, Willoughby used to be a, an actress. I'm pretty sure. I love it. I don't know. All right, nice here we go. Team. Maximilian, Joe Carballo, Scott Forehand. I swear he kills it every week. Devin Fleming, number one this week, 23805 bucks. Way to go, Devin. Woo. Number one app count writer was Misty Hutton, 27 applications. The top, and really only Medicare sub producer for the week, was Shelly Ann White. Nice. Just asking a few extra questions. That's all she did. Shane Jamillo, the top DI writer with 3740. Top IUL producer was Thomas Sunshine, $25,200 on one app. If you're only going to pick up one, that'd be a good one to start with. Good one. And he may have picked up a lot more than that. We're just talking about annuities, okay? Top uh, annuity producer, Elizabeth Jano, $569,400. Annuities are really starting to climb. Mm-hmm. So is this the top DL DFL rider for the week? Scott Forehand with eighteen thousand six forty four. Uh, where are we here? Recruits top base shop. Look at Mark Newbauer. He's killing it, man. On a on a recruiting tear right now. Top direct was Jacob Pogue with twenty four. Good numbers from everybody all around. Licensed recruits: Villagrand, Shinovar, Newbauer, all tied for four. Jacob Pogue with eleven licensed recruits. Go find more of them all of you they need your help they're out there i think we put a video out about this remember it was like the aspca where you had linwood you get a real picture of a real agent (laughs) that was linwood watkins holding a real lead holding a real lead (laughs) hmm we need to play that one again soon yeah we do top new writers in the base ian graham and amy fine tied with three Mike and Sarah Pappas with five as the top direct. Some new SNAs, Alyssa Mole, Adam Eli, could be Eli, just saying. Brian Grohlman, Heather Willoughby, James Tipton, Madeline Thielen, on their very first weeks out, by the way, became nice. SNAs, some of these. Uh, Providencia Jimenez, Ronald Townsend, Sarah Call, Scotty McKinney, Shelly White, and Sherry Upchurch Carter. Well nice. done, all you SNAs. Go get you some bonuses. Slingshot yourself. Martin Kimboy, the number one key leader for the week with 27000 in premium. Jerry Choate with 52552 as the top AO. Nice. Top agency directors, Larry and Ann Griffin with 107549 I see you, Ian Graham. Look at that. I see him. Ian's got a little smile on his face in that picture, doesn't he? And hey, look at Derek Brock over there knows what it was that does not look like the Derek Brock that I've grown it doesn't either it doesn't mean it looks like it looks like a Jernigan but can't can't say for sure I think it's probably just us Trey Alderson Cloutier with 177,277 bucks if you go back up look at the I know Ryan and Rachel Jernigan here (laughs) I like it they're just better detective on us aren't they a better detective would know what was going on right now. You and I are clueless. I guess I just had it wrong this whole time. <laughs> Christopher Clark, go back. Christopher Clark looks kind of like um, 
like an old, like, like a detective in a 1940s movie right there. Or like a, yeah. like a, poli- a policeman. Yeah, that'd be good. I always thought he kind of looked like um, Superman before he kind of ripped his tie off and <laughs> yeah. flew away. But I like where you're going. Yeah. With the glasses there, especially. Yeah, and like a NASA, like the guy that, old, the old movies are like the NASA guy, you know. Uh huh. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. I like that. Too. The headquarters there. Yeah. All right. We nice week, though. Yeah, it was a great week. Top MVPs, George and Janet Matthews. That's one T for those keeping score at home. Pretty amazing. Look at Jimmy, 244,210 bucks. Woo-wee. That's a big old week. Top executive vice president, Miranda Martin. Look at that. Just shy of 100K. Top associate partner, Linthorpe Watkins, 615,000. Excuse me, 614,000. Well done. Top senior partner was Easy Eddie Pritchett with million. Nice. Big one. Top managing partner, 688,000 for Marshall Whalen. But let's keep in mind that there was a conference going on. 1200 some odd of his, of his agents out of the, uh, you know, out, out of town and in, in, in a conference. So it's to be expected. So yes. All right. Whalen team got a rally this week there, right? You've got about 300,000 to make up this week. Can you do it? We'll give you two weeks to make it up. I think they can. I think they can. Top direct Trey Alderson Cloutier with 177,277. Go Trey. Nice. Top base shop. Ian Graham with 86,477 bucks. Man, when you have a base shop that's producing 100,000, 85,000, 100,000 a week, even a base shop that's producing 50,000 a week is a significant amount of money. I want everyone to understand this, the investment of building an agency and specifically building a base shop, which is kind of like the way if you're new on the phone, it's kind of like... um, a farm team. You know, if you're an agency owner or striving to be an agency owner, let's say, um, those that you're recruiting kind of direct to you as you're recruiting, those are your, that, that's your, called your base shop. Or, you know, we, we like to refer to it almost like your farm team. This is the group of agents that are going to be escalating up to top producers and your future leaders. So at some point, you know, Ian Graham and his base shop will identify a top leader that's then going to actually have an agency within the company as well. And the idea is to get as many people uh, to be agency owners as you can in your business. I mean, when you get that kind of, uh, when you get that kind of look and feel, Brandon, in your business, you truly have gotten into the the world of financial freedom where your money is not attached to your feet. And when your feet stop moving for a week or two to go on vacation, your money keeps flowing. Or if you get sick or injured and you can't work, your money keeps flowing. But it all starts in building the base shop. It just happens to be one of the most profitable activities and the best return on investment, not just in insurance, in pretty much anything, Brandon, that we've ever seen, which is why you and I always heavily invested, especially when we were starting the company, in our base shop. That was most of our focus. And so if you take an Ian Graham, if you take $86,000, of volume, just quick math for you guys. If you take that's submit, so 86,000 times, let's just say it all cleans out at to 60,000 um, after um, issue rate and, and uh, persistency. So 60,000. And uh, what contract do you think Ian's on roughly? I'm going to guess a 110. 110. And so if you're hiring agents on a 70, and they're becoming agency owners on a 95, then let's just say the average of them is 80, 85, something like that. Yeah. So what's your what's your average spread on base shop then, Brandon? Call it 20 points. 15. That's $12,000 $12, a month before you get out of bed just on your base shop. And that's at an $86,000 base shop. So, And I probably started. did my math wrong. So <laughs> you might have. He's making more money than the guy that invented the sham well. I'll tell you that. When you, when you think about what was the actual investment in creating that base shop, you know, mm-hmm. um, it, it certainly is not 12000 a month. Um, you know, let's call it three to $4,000 a month, if that. 
If that, yep. Depends so on what, 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 piece, what piece of real estate, Brandon, can you buy right now for three a month? Or what would that be annually? 30,000 annually to create, you know, 150,000 annual net return. Mm. There's not much out there like that. And Probably that yeah, keeps going. Yeah. And that's, and then you're going to identify Ian's going to identify a, you know, an, an Edward Pritchett throughout that year, someone that is going to do way more than just be in the base shop as a producer. They're going to actually pick up the ball and run with it. Um, and then you end up looking at, you know, a two, three, five hundred thousand dollar million dollar a month agency. And maybe you have, you know, four these, percentage points on it. It's spread. And don't forget, and these are weekly numbers. These are weekly. So that's 12,000 a week. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think you're talking about more like how can you invest three or 4,000 a month to make about $600,000 a year? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was doing I told you our math was all messed up. Number one, I think I did my addition or multiplication or subtraction wrong. And then you just shortchanged Ian like Ian. Like right. like I, I cut your, I cut your, uh, your monthly in, into a quarter there. So yeah, that's weekly. Sorry. So invest a few few grand a month. We'll show you how to invest it. Turn it into twelve grand a week. Sign yep. me up. Sign me up for that math. I like it. All right. We'll see what's next. I'm going to be surprised. Oh, here we go. Got an update. DX leads. Uh huh. Was DX a rapper from a long time ago? DMX. We could throw oh, an M in there. Hmm. Digital mortgage X leads. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, you guys know all about them. They're nine bucks pop. Uh, we've already allocated 2,800. I said 2,400 on the last call, 2,800 since Thursday afternoon. We did not allocate over the weekend. So no Saturday, Sunday, Monday, holiday. Um, and this is still in ramp up mode. So get in there while the getting's good, but we got a whole lot more leads coming out after that. We it got will a, be um, Brandon too. You know, we are wrapping up our, lead uh, value price um, value based lead pricing yep um, and so you know we've we we always try to give you guys as much fair warning and advance notice that lead pricing changes are coming so you know yep. be expecting that over the next couple of weeks some lead costs will be going down based on the value um, some lead costs are going up we also in the middle of all of this pricing uh, post office had I think what is their largest increase in postage that they've had ever. Yep. Um, so that threw a little bit of a, a, a wrench in things, but the, the value-based pricing is going to be awesome from a transparency standpoint, just because what we're doing is we're taking the averages um, based on the close ratios, the net, uh, the PPLs, and we're applying that to contract levels and then pegging the pricing so that you guys have even more confidence and your agents, your new agents especially, have even more confidence that if you are just average, these leads produce at least four times to five times the return on your investment. Now, if you have agents that come to you and say, well, it, this, this lead's not producing four or five times return, then I would remind them that that's why it's an average. And the reason there's an average is because some, some agents are above average and some agents are below average. And so maybe yep. we got to kind of work on that skill and work on that, um, the training aspect of things a little bit to get you up to average or, or better yet, above average. So we can increase our averages across the board as a company goes. But um, we're going to peg it on averages, but that stuff is coming very soon. Yep. Uh, tomorrow, we got Gary Keith in the Boas for some final expense training. Then Thursday, we've got, which is also tomorrow, Mutual Trust, um, not Moodle but mutual trust. We've got a Monday call with that we were hyping up last week, Sarah Reineke and Jamie Susie, which is going to be awesome. No yep. more secret agent life. Time to tell the world what we do. And then uh, Tuesday, D-F-L-I-V-I-N with Mr. Mike Resma. So get your calendars in order because you got a bunch of them. Oh, that's it. Blank screen. Whoop. There we go. I feel like we did pretty good on those. A lot of yeah. announcements. Um, got some questions coming in. Haven't got my DX leads yet. What does X stand for in DX? It's exchange, not uh, experienced or expedient. 
Um, there was a good question. I can't remember what the, what they said. Some people haven't gotten them yet. They're going in order in which the, uh, the order was received. So got to hang tight. It's in ramp up mode. I don't think we were expecting 3,500 plus orders coming out. Keeping in mind, we, we have filled close to 3000 already, but, um, maybe we weren't expecting quite that many. We'll just yeah. say that. So yep. hang tight as we perfect the system for sure. All right. Rando. Yes, sir, Spidey. Oh, from Orlando. Yes, I, I remember. Um, I remember now beyond. your announcement. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, just want to clear that up for everybody, and just make sure you know that uh, SBLI and efficiency is working around the clock. They're making sure everything is lined up. Um, they've had one technical glitch on getting all the links ready, so we can send out to your agents when we're ready to rock and roll, and actually write the new quality term product. And because that's not ready to go just yet, we are going to delay the SBLI training until next Thursday when uh, we will be able to roll out the link, we'll be able to train, and you will be able to write the product shortly thereafter. So just want to make yep. sure everybody knows that not tomorrow, but the next Thursday, we'll do the SBLI training for quality terms. They also had, so there's a couple of things there. There was a little glitch that they're working, which I think they're probably close to already fixing if they haven't already. And there was their, one of their main trainers was going to be in the air. And um, so they kind of request us to push that, push that back one week, which is totally fine. We're still on schedule, as we said, um, early to mid September. So yep. I think next week's still going to be mid September, man. That's right. Looking good. I am so fired up about that product. I took one out on myself and did the training because I wanted to go through it. I took a million dollar policy out on myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't tell Meredith, but I took a million dollar policy out on myself. You make me the beneficiary. Uh -huh. That's right. A key man. I'm not telling, not telling who I made the beneficiary because I don't want to be off just quite yet. <laughs> That's not what we do. It's probably not in good taste. Um, but I was so fired up about the technology behind it. It literally took me 10 minutes to fill out the whole app. And that was from quote to finalize. And I was the agent and the client. So I got to experience both sides of it. The way they do, the way they kind of email and text you for signatures. First off, there's not even any signatures. You're clicking boxes and moving okay. on. It was so amazing. That was the only thing that really got me hung up was, and I told the guys this, I was like, you might want to put a message here because it was, it was almost too good to be true. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that I'm done. Uh -huh. And I was done. Yeah. Got my policy emailed to me. So you get a, a link text it to you on your phone, you click, you review, you scroll down, you click, you move on. Like for people with the direct consumer platform, this is going to kill it. For people with, uh, that are doing virtual selling, it's, gonna, it's really going to kill it for everybody. The main thing, as we said last week, and we'll keep working on this, is don't get into a habit because you've never done this before of selling on, I should say, solely value-based uh, or solely price-based um, yep. value. There's a lot of value in, you know, being able, as people said last week, to replace someone's income in addition to pay off their mortgage, right? There's a lot of value in getting $500,000 of coverage or a million dollars of coverage if they were quoted 400,000 or 750 or whatever it is, right? So understanding how to build more value to these products, we got ROP coming. It's not quite there yet, but this is also, I just want to remind everyone, this is Product number one. There's a lot more where this came from. There is. And, you know, you said you mentioned something really um, important there that I think we we maybe overlook a little bit in our company is everyone's ability to give themselves a 10 or 20 percent raise without any extra work. You know, the ability to learn to, to be able to sell value in what something does for someone and be able to paint that picture well enough for them to spend $120 and invest $120 in a policy versus $80 because you're too focused on price selling. Um, you know, it's no more work. You don't have to, you, you know, you don't have, we're not talking about investing in more leads here. We're not talking about investing. Well, we're just saying in the homes that you're in, if your average price or if your average um, customer or client is paying 80 bucks a month right now, you're below our average, which means there are a lot of agents around you 
sitting with those exact same type of clients that are selling policies at 100, 120 a month. My average, Brandon, my average case size was usually in the 120, $130 a month range. And it's because I was really good at explaining riders and putting that client in that position. And I was really good at getting the why up front and kind of filling those needs. You were in the same ballpark. You and I had always focused on, you know, not overselling, not pushing, because then you get all sorts of, you know, problems potentially with, you know, people canceling and stuff like that. But just understanding how to sell value and making that uh, a little bit more of a concentration for you guys over the next month. If, if you are below the averages, if you're below, let's say a hundred bucks a month on our normal mortgage type or turn, even the, the, the life insurance leads brand are showing bigger, um, Kate, uh, bigger premium sizes too, because it's not attached to a mortgage amount. So it's another thing, in addition to increasing our lead flow, increasing our appointment count is how are we selling? Are we using value to sell the products or are we still hooked on price? Because maybe it sounds, maybe like we would only pay 80 bucks a month. So that's what I'm going to show my clients. We always used to say this, quit bringing your wallet into the home. It's not your wallet. It's their money. Don't, don't think that you know what, what's, uh, you know what's of value to them. Show them the value, sell the value to them, put them in the story, help them understand where the benefits come from. Again, it's not what it is. What it is is critical illness or what it is is return of premium. It's not what it is. It's how, how is it actually, what is it actually going to do for them? And being able to kind of sell that, man, again, you can give yourself a 15, 20 point raise overnight. Just by saying things a little bit differently, it's a, it's a really, really good point. Yep. Um, and you know, it's it's even if you have a product that doesn't have those add-ons as you're as you're talking about, like how am I coming in with either an accidental death plus disability add-on? Yep. How am I um, setting setting up for maybe a DFL add-on? There's a ton of value in just the sales coming after the sales. Annuities are a great example, but. Um, you know, understanding the Assurity product lines, the Mutual of Omaha product lines, all those things that you can tack on if they're not part of the riders um, yep. that you could do it. I had an interesting question. I wanted to get your feedback on this. Someone in the chat said, I've never seen Casey or Brandon actually make a sale. Can we have a webinar where they're making sales? And I'm like, there are people way better, way better than we are right now. You don't, you don't want to do that. The person that asked the question probably is way better than we were. I mean, a great week for us. Here's what we did really, really well. I'm going to pat myself on the back right here. Yep. Here's what you did really well. And here's what I did really well. We didn't go out every week and write $10,000 in production a week. We did go out and write something. And generally it was never below 5,000. Uh, and it was usually closer to six or seven or 7,500. We had really good issue rates because we didn't like wasting time. And we also had really consolidated timeframes so that we knew how long it took us to do the production, how long it took us to, to do the applications, because that was something that people don't have to worry about now that we did, having to do all that paperwork, make copies. I hate to admit it, but fax them into insurance carriers before they could even receive emailed links. Um, and then we had... We knew exactly what days of the week we were doing that and exactly what times of the week we were doing that. And we knew exactly when we were going to be recruiting. And basically, we knew how many recruits that we could get a week. You were going to get five. I was going to get five. We weren't going to stop until we did. And so that's where this whole concept of kind of filling both boxes yep. really came up. And I'm not saying that we were great at that early on. There was something that we had to learn to get better at. But what we used to always say is control what you can control. You can control how many leads you get. You can control how much activity you have. You can control how many recruits you get if you're willing to work until you don't stop. And maybe you can't control those things right out of the gate, but you can control how much better you're getting every single week and what it is that you're doing to get better, right? Does that make sense? So totally. if there was one thing that we were very good at, it was maintaining consistency in performance every week. Yep. We knew within a couple thousand, unless we got lucky, we knew within a couple of thousand dollars of what we would personally produce. And we knew within a contract or two of how many recruits that we would get. Yep. And that's the most important thing that I would say. For there was everybody. no choice, man. We just, you know, early on, I think 
the tendency for people is to kind of let their bank account dictate that activity level a little bit. Yep. And, you know, it's kind of like feast or famine, you know, I've got a bunch of sales, a bunch of money coming in. I got a bunch of money and now I'm, I kind of take it easy a little bit. And then I'm kind of, I'm just this roller coaster of production. And therefore that what I've found, and I think probably everyone feels this way is when the bank account is like this, so is the emotion. So is the emotion count. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, emotional stability, uh, you know, breeds more consistency and consistency breeds more emotional stability. So it's like a reciprocal thing that you kind of need to understand in this business that if I don't let my bank account dictate my activity level and I just work regardless of what's in the account and I have consistency, then my emotions also start to shape up very stable. And that's important for how are you coming across to your clients? Yeah. That's especially important if you're building an agency, because the very least thing you owe your people as a leader is emotional stability. That's the last thing. That's the least you owe them. The very least you can owe They need to look at right. you and see someone who's emotionally stable through the ups, through the downs. They're not, you're not overly up and you're not overly down. You're kind of just hanging in this world. And if you can get your bank account steady, I found, Brandon, that the emotions kind of followed that a touch, especially early yeah. on. So positivity and emotional yeah. stability, those are the minimums that you have to give yeah. as yeah. a builder. I'm not saying that you're as a builder want to be a cheerleader all the time. That's part of it. You got to have kind of complicated or difficult conversations as well, but you add more value than you can ever think by doing exactly what you just said, showing up positive, showing up emotionally positive they know what they're going to get from you um and looking at your numbers they know that this this is doable i just got to get to be as good as casey is on top of everything else that you had going on you know you were able to show people that you can go out and write five to seven or eight policies every single week week in week out same number of leads every week week in week out and you had a whole slew of other things you were doing but you could still accomplish that and I yep. think that's as a builder and as a mentor, that's what, that's how you grow is show up those ways and keep getting results yourself. And then you're having positive conversations, creating connections. And Brandon, where, where don't you think that where the, where the motivation for us in a lot of ways came from too, is that realizing that this thing is really a journey that changes a lot along the way. Like if mm -hmm. you told me in the very beginning, Casey, you're in for uh, you know, 20 years of, uh, you know, selling every week and recruiting every week and kind of like, man, that, you know, like, where's the, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Like, show me a little bit of change in, in what I'm actually doing as a, as a business person. Yeah. That's the beauty of what we have is what Brandon is saying is like this juggling act of going out and doing five to 7,000 in personal production and recruiting five, six, eight people a week is not a permanent thing. If you do that consistently for a, even a year, you're going to pop up and you're going to look around and you're going to go, my world is drastically different right now. You know, this numbers we did with Ian Graham, I'm going to go, you're, you're going to get into that territory where you're like, man, not only am I, you know, making $150,000 a year with my personal pen, I'm also setting myself up to have quite a nice little business on my hands. And then you start going, okay, now I've got enough passive income coming in to where my active income my personal production isn't as an important. And now I can start to trail off of that at a certain point. So I just love that this thing just kind of takes on uh, different shapes along the way. And it just kind of keeps things from getting too redundant for too long. And you kind of graduate yourself up. If you're doing it right, you're graduating yourself up from a leadership standpoint to doing different things, you know, and things that quite honestly end up making a bigger impact across the board you know, because yeah. of your capacity now as a leader. Yeah. And that's how you continue to redefine and develop purpose at every right. stage too, and, and prevent yes. burnout is like, you're making such a positive impact on so many people. It feels amazing to do it. But I would also say that the beauty of what we have to never forget what everybody that's on this call has helped to create is not just the ability to go out and make a great living and make an impact on people that way, but the ability to create so much freedom and time for yourself and your family, the people closest to you, yep. you know, the ability to show up to the kids games or the ability to show up if you're not even married or kids or don't want any of those things, the ability to, to do the things that you really enjoy 
doing, you know, that's what you guys have created um, as we continue to evolve this thing. And I'll never forget that that's what was the most important thing to me. Even as the money continued to grow, the most important thing to me was that I could show up where I wanted to, when I wanted to, didn't have to ask anybody about it. Yep. I could show up because I was going to be consistent in the areas of my business that allowed me to show mm -hmm. up and create yeah. my own schedule. That's something that's so unique, Casey, yep. that people don't understand if they've been here and really nowhere else, they don't really understand how unique and how special that is. We look around the industry and we look at our quote unquote competitors and what is their messaging? You're not working hard enough. And it's not just our competitors. It's really most sales based yeah. companies. You're not doing enough. You're not making enough money. You're yeah. not working hard enough. Where's your activity? You're not doing this yeah. enough. Where's your Ferrari? Yeah. You're not buying enough leads. We're not saying that you have to go buy more leads. We're just saying that if you want to write more production, you can go buy more leads to do it. Yep. Right. But that is such a, such a um, yep. unique value prop that nobody else out there has. And I think people are really starting to, a lot of, we're all preaching to the choir here, but a lot of people on the outside looking in are like, oh, I yep. see it now. Yep. I get it. You know, a couple of updates, guys. And just, you know, if you missed last week's call and the week before, as you guys know, we are, this is, you know, we keep using the term gold rush. This is the biggest, we've gone through phases of this company over the past 12 years, Brandon, where we've had just time, from a timing standpoint, a lot of things line up to create a massive amount of momentum and opportunity for people. And the people, the leaders that capitalize on that, capitalize on that. Right now, I would argue this is by far the biggest kind of mesh of opportunity meeting opportunity that we've ever had as a company. And so just, you know, understand where we are in the, in the frame of um, what's going on in the industry, understanding all the things that we're working on behind the scenes that no one else really seems to be working on. Um, it is a massive advantage for us as a company guys. And so um, in fact, we were on the phone this morning with a, um, top global PR firm that is just licking their chops at understanding what it is that we do and why no one else is competing with us in this space. And they're saying, so what we're doing with that, just so you guys know, from a leadership standpoint, we're working on some support levels that are, are going to be greatly enhanced for, especially those of you wanting to build a business specifically around events. We're going to be talking with some of the advisory board about that next week and kind of how we're structuring our events going forward to give a little bit more corporate support uh, for that. We're also going to be kind of um, organizing and giving a little bit more corporate support around the recruiting and helping really kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, weaponizing you guys with the right kind of press and the right kind of marketing material so that you actually have a database and a bank as leaders to take what we're doing behind the scenes from a branding and marketing standpoint and teach you how to implement it in your own recruiting funnels. So that we're, we're, we're we, in fact, we had an hour and a half call this morning working on that. So stuff like that is coming. I saw a question around ears. Um, we are just putting, sorry for, for the delay there guys, but ears, um, a lot of it falls on uh, Mark Palmer's shoulders to start with. And it's, it's an extremely heavy lift uh, and, it, and it always will be because there's just so many of you guys getting here. So that's a good thing. But um, we have, I think, the final approval done on that today. And so ears will be coming out very shortly, guys. We're, we're working on it. So, um, but just good timing. I mean, we got so many good things going on. I think today's call is, is a perfect timing too for what everyone needs to be thinking about. So it's hammer down time, September to remember, buddy. I love it. I love it. September to remember indeed. Scott Summers, welcome to the to the show. Um, you know, the last thing I'll say before we get into Scott and his crew is everybody take just a second and I want you to write something down. You know, if there's one thing that you could do differently this week and next week that would have a dramatic impact on your business, on your level of production this week and next week and possibly even the following week take a second think about what that thing is maybe there's two of them don't get much more than two mm -hmm. what is that thing that if you do it better do it differently do it more will have the biggest impact on your business this week 
and next week. Write that down and we're going to hold accountable ourselves to the one thing. Maybe there's two. Just this week, just next week, we're going to start real simple. Casey, you sent me the, the best TikTok that I've seen in a long time that wasn't funny, but it was a Mel Robbins TikTok. And it was yeah. basically along the lines of, you know, it's time to wake up. That's a good Ain't one. nobody going to come get you out of bed. Ain't nobody going to do this stuff for you, Scott Summers. Yep. Ain't nobody going to buy the leads for you. Ain't nobody going to call them for you. And ain't nobody going to make the sales for you. You got to do it yourself, right? And accountability is a challenging thing, especially when we're having others hold us accountable. And so this week, I just want us to try to hold ourselves accountable to one thing or two things. For many of you, it might be buy more leads. For many of you, it might be make more dials. Yep. For many of you, it may be something completely that, that we're not even thinking about. And that's fine. Write that down. Hold yourself accountable to it this week. And in the meantime, open TikTok and find Casey's Mel Robbins quote. Maybe we can figure out how to stick it somewhere so people can see it. I mean, I could just play it right now if you want me to, but hey, man, play it. Let me see it if I got it here. Golly, it was good. I think you sent it to me at like 11 o'clock at night, too. Got me all fired up. Here it is. <laughs> No one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. No one's coming to tell you to get out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to write a business plan for you. Your job to make yourself do the crap you don't want to do so you can be everything that you're supposed to be. And you're so damn busy waiting to feel like it. And you're never going to. You've got to prepare it yourself. You've got to push yourself. You, was, you, uh, you, I don't know if you could hear that. It's tough to hear it. Yeah, it was really good. But it said, um, you got to parent yourself. What did she say? Um, nobody's nobody's going to come over there and motivate you to do it. Yep. You got to so do good. it yourself. So good. Man, Find it on TikTok. Find the quote. Yeah. So you can get a clear that's list. What, um, that's what, what you channeled your Mel Robbins in that, in that last little tip of the day, Brandon, which is that what I get from that is the, like the power of now. You know, not planning next week or waiting until two weeks from now or a month from now or, or taking today to try to really do a bunch of planning. So, so much, I think people get kind of misguided in they spend too much time thinking about what they're going to do and not enough time about what am I going to do today? What can I do today to change things? Um, pa the power of now, I think, is John Maxwell. Um, great book around that. Um, yeah, and I may be I may be wrong on the author there, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was John Maxwell. It sounds like him, doesn't it? It does sound like him. No, and I think you're dead on. If it wasn't him yep. that wrote it, then he's written several things just like it. But you're exactly right. The decision to do is the feel good part. The actual doing is where the work comes in. Um, it has to start with the decision, and then you have to carry that forward to continue to motivate yourself to actually do it to get out of the comfort zone in the doing. Right. Yep. Um, and that's what we're, I think we're looking for people to do this week and next week is find that one thing, you know, just find the one that you can do. Cause it's hard to hold ourselves accountable to everything. You know, we say yep. it all the time. It's like, man, the line of stuff I should be doing starts way back there, you know, that I'm not doing. I should be eating better. I should be exercising more. I should be doing certain things less and other things more. Let's hold ourselves accountable to the one thing business wise that we can. And let's go do that. Scott Summers, did you ever have that conversation with yourself when you were getting started on your tear of 66,000, which if I remember right, was over 85,000 uh, for the whole contest when you won November to remember, I don't know, was that two or three years ago, three, four years ago now? It's yeah, been a while. It, was, it was 2016. And yeah, I remember having those moments. It's like, you know, having that little battle with yourself, like, you know, this voice over here, this voice over here. But one thing I, I just kind of told myself is that I'm accountable to myself. And that's the one thing I love about this business over and over again, keeps showing us, you know, whether you're doing the income producing activities to, to kind of sh to make that production happen or the long-term producing activities for investing in the long-term. But, you know, you get to slide the chips in the middle of the table and say, hey, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm betting on myself. I know that I can do this as long as I follow the system. That's what I love about it. Love yeah, that. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. 
What kind of conversations did you have with your spouse when it came time to, to really kind of get out of that balance zone, right? Because there's a give and take. And for, for everybody that has um, a family or other commitments, whatever those look like, whatever you're going to give this week to something, you're going to be taking something away from somewhere else. And it's oftentimes worth it, but it oftentimes will cause a little strife if you don't have intentional conversations about what that looks like. Yep. Yeah, well, one of the things I you know, learned from Giant, and you know, thanks to the guys, uh, Jim Lee and the rest of the crew that are working with my team right now, but we're, you know, in that we have the 70-30 scale, right? 70-30, the learned things that we're comfortable with doing, and then the 30% over here, the things that we're not really as comfortable with working with that we have to kind of work a little bit harder on making ourselves like getting into the gym, that type of mentality. Um, but, you know, I was comfortable and, uh, you know, with going out, have, hunting, bringing back home, the, you know, the money. Um, but, you know, I, I said for the long term approach, if we want everything that out of this business, we have to we, we really have to start investing in those long term producing activities and start getting out of my comfort zone. And, uh, and, and we work together, Kelly and I work together. And, and fortunately for, for us, uh, that chemistry really worked. It's good stuff, man. So you gave us a promo. Um, you have some folks on here, Scott, that I have not even had an opportunity to meet yet, um, which is exciting, you know? So I'm gonna let you kind of introduce some of these, um, some of these new, new team players that you've got and talk about uh, what's going on so yeah. just to give some numbers you are um your largest month as an organization was was about three hundred seventy thousand. is that right that's right yeah this okay. year and you've been building for how long uh really started commit you know once again that, that commitment like tiptoeing around and then and then really making a decision was but the beginning of 2017. Okay. So in four years, four and a half years, um, you've been able to put together, you know, a 300 to call it three to $400,000 agency. And what would you say, Scott, that your average spread on that production would be? We're not going to necessarily get into specific income, but we'll let people draw their own conclusions. What do you think your average spread is? I would say it's probably about 12 to 15%. Okay. Okay. That's exciting, isn't it? What were you doing before this? Oh, really, really is. Yeah, it's just, it's hard to really even kind of like, you know, to develop, you know, when I first came into the business, I was, I was, I was, I kind of worked part-time home improvement sales, worked my way into symmetry. And, um, you know, just the idea of having like that passive income, like the four cash flow quadrants, like, you know, like I've heard Casey say this before, like that was really exciting to me. Like, I just knew the one box that I was really comfortable in, that was production. And, um, you know, building the bridge over to the business side really was something I really had to kind of to do. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it, talk about looking different. I mean, just, it's hard to believe that you're, it's, it's hard to see where you're really at. And I've heard Jacob Pogue say this before. It's like, I'm, I'm to the point now where I'm, I'm seeing that, that, you know, hearing his words echo in my head, it's like, Money isn't the most important thing, but it's nice to not to have to worry about it, right? And um, so we're, we're really to a point where, you know, I wouldn't say comfortable, but we're really happy with all the hard work looking back on it. It was so worth it. Absolutely, man. Well, we're extremely proud of you. You know, obviously the, the, the run that you were on earlier this year, the way you kind of handled that, but it's really been a run that you've been on for five years and the way you've kind of handled yourself throughout all of that. Uh, from being a top producer in a contest winner to now being at the top contract and um, looking to soon become, I think, an equity partner. And uh, just the value you bring to the organization and to Purdy's organization and to Linwood's organization um, does not go missed. So, Scott, we appreciate you, man. Thank you yeah, for joining man. us today and, and pouring into some folks. They're going to get a lot out of what you've got to say for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you again. Once again, Scott Summers, Direct to Symmetry, uh, Kevin Purdy, Linwood Watkins, and uh, the, the three uh, folks that you see on my screen today. Basically, what we're going to be doing is an in-character approach to starting your business with Symmetry. I'm really excited about it. We're not, we probably won't uh, be able to over overdo um, Reggie, but we will be an in-character a little bit here. And it's going to create some coaching moments 
Uh, Brett Diamond um, uh, on our team uh, is a, was a previous nightclub uh, promoter. So he was the guy kind of doing the rah-rah, trying to get people excited to come into the nightclub. Uh, we got Steve Bender, who's on our team, who has spent 30 years in marketing, and Debbie Woods, who actually managed seven fast food restaurants. So we're going to be talking with them a little bit, and we're going to do a week-by-week -week approach here to get started for their, for, their, uh, for their beginning to symmetry. Really excited about this. And um, so at this point, we're going to start a webinar here in just a few seconds. And we're going to invite our agents on uh, for the time that we allotted to, to for them to show up. We're going to do a little meet and greet, and I really want to kind of try to figure out what's what's what the what they're looking for symmetry to do for them. So uh, we're going to get started. All of them have uh, finished up their homework and uh, they're showing up. So I see folks popping onto our webinar here. Uh, you guys uh, out there, see if we can get the audio and video working. Brett, Steve, and Debbie. All right, hey guys, how are y'all doing today? Doing good, good Scott. Doing great. Awesome. awesome. Well, um, I see all of you have finished your homework with the the onboarding and the phase training here, and um, so uh, you guys are all up to speed. You guys excited? Absolutely. Can't wait. Pumped. Awesome. Well, I know you two, you all, the three of you, haven't had a chance really to meet each other. So um, why don't we kind of go around the horn here? Let's uh, start with you, Debbie. Um, why don't you uh, tell us a, just a, a little bit about yourself and what's your uh, what's your why? What do you what do you what are you looking to get accomplished here? Yes, thank you. My name is Debbie Woods. Um, I was in the restaurant industry for over 16 years, uh, district manager of uh, of seven restaurants. Uh, I'm just tired of being tired. Um, I'm just very excited to be here, Scott. I just want to know what's what's next. Awesome. Well, we will definitely give that to you. Um, so um, you're, you're really looking uh, to have some more time life balance, it sounds like. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good. All right. Well, Steve Bender, man, how you doing? Introduce yourself. Tell us a little about something about yourself and your why. Hey, hey Scott. Yeah, this is Steve from New Jersey. And, uh, you know, I spent about 30 years in marketing, mostly uh, ad agencies in uh, Manhattan. And, you know, I was just tired of someone else controlling my, my own career. So I wanted to take more control of it. And ultimately, I want to be able to retire my uh, my wife and spend some more time with my son. So I can't wait. What's next steps? Let's get going. All right, man. We're going to give those to you today. Uh, thank you guys uh, for doing your homework and uh, showing up prepared. Uh, last but not least here. Hey, hey, Brett is going to call on you next, buddy. How you doing? Oh, awesome. I'm fired up here. Want to make a lot of money, Scott. A lot of money, like you told me on the interview. Uh, that's what I'm about. You know, we promoted make money. And I just don't want anyone telling me what to do. So, you know, just be my own boss. Okay. Um, that's really what it's about. You know, being my own boss, I got to go do dishes. I got to do the laundry. You know, you got to take the pets out. You got to do groceries. There are a lot of things you got to do in the day. So, you know, I just want to make sure I have that time to do those things. And uh, that's important to me, Scott. So okay. uh, thanks for the All opportunity right, yeah. here. Thanks for thanks for chiming in. It sounds somewhat similar to Debbie. You want some time life balance, and uh, I think we could bring all that to you with symmetry. And you know, I just want to kind of like establish this first. You know, um, there. You know, you when you come to symmetry, you don't have a manager, right? Um, there is a manager here, but it's not me. Okay, so I want you guys all to repeat after me, and point at yourself when you say this. I manage. Go I manage. ahead. I manage. He mentors. He mentors. Right. Let's try it one more time. I manage. I'm not. I he manage. Mentors. He mentors. He mentors. Okay, there you go. So you guys are your own managers. I can't manage you guys. I'm just here to mentor you guys along. So the other, the other really important thing here is we want to establish good lines of communication. Um, the thing is, we work remotely. So you guys are going to be, you know, working out of your home or home office. So the most important thing is letting me know how I can help you. Okay. Um, let me just ask one, all of you guys this, what do you, what would you say would be the top response to somebody not calling me for help? Uh, what, what do you think that, that their top response is when I ask them why they didn't call me for help? Anyone? Uh, you're really busy. You got so many agents and all that. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, I'm just super busy, right? Well, the thing is, is yes, I am busy, but I'm busy with the people that pick up the phone and call me. 
So I don't know how to help you. You know, so we're working uh, in this in this fashion. So good lines of communication are going to be really important. And the next thing you're going to notice for me is I'm going to give you clear, specific guidance here. Okay, so if we need to set up an appointment, um, we're going to set up a hard appointment, and I'm going to work around your schedule because I realize some of you guys are working your way out of one career and into symmetry. So I'm going to help you guys in any way I can, but it's going to be with with clear, specific. Uh, approach to uh, to um, getting you guys started. So we do have some time set up already. Uh, Steve, we got you set up for Monday at two o'clock to get some leads. Yep. I know you guys are all prepared and ready to make some dials here. Uh, Debbie, it looks like we're set up to get some leads for you at about 4 p.m. on uh, to Monday. And then uh, Brett, we got you set up for five o'clock. So I think I'm super- I'm sorry to interrupt. Five o'clock, I think I have an appointment. Can you do 5.30, Scott? Should we take this offline or? Um, yeah, okay, you know what? I'll just, I'll, I'll make that happen. That's that's good for you? Yeah, okay. yeah, that, you know, I have a, you know, there's things going on, so yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, there we go. All right, so uh, once again, well, I'll talk to you a little bit about the key, four keys to a successful week, review those before we uh, have our conversation about getting, getting you guys your first batch of leads. I will see you guys all on Monday. Everyone take care. Have a good day. See y'all later. So one of the one of the things I like to do when I'm mentoring new agents is I want I want them to formulate what it is that their why is. Um, you know, and I also explain to uh, new agents a lot of times is you know that this can be a roller coaster emotional type of business. Your why is going to keep you anchored in here. You know, um, this it's it's different than your W two position where you just show up and get paid. Um, so I want to try to dig in on their why. I'm going to keep that in front of them as we're working through the mentorship process. Communication is key. I want to let people know that they can reach out and call me. Sometimes people are, you know, secret agents out there. They won't pick up the phone and call you if they need help. And then lastly, um, I just really want to make sure I have clear, specific instruction. Mistakes that I made early on would be like uh, something like this. Okay, so um, Let's go go ahead and pick up some leads and then uh, let's get back together and, we'll, and report back to me your DCAs after you made some dials, right? Instead, letting them determine on determine when they can meet up with me, uh, what, what would be a good time for them to meet up? We're going to put it on the schedule and then I'm going to have a clear time uh, to, to, to get back together. Um, so we're going to uh, shoot for uh, 25 dials um, and then we're going to meet at 7 p.m on Monday. And then when we're getting our leads, we're going to do kind of a reverse engineer approach. I want to see what their goals are. And then we're going to help kind of reverse engineer what they're going to need resource wise to get through that first week of of, uh, their um, dials. Okay. Uh, So as I bring them back, we're going to go ahead and review how they did for their first week. So it looks like they're showing up now. Um, there we are. Hey, Debbie, Steve. Uh, let's see, looks like Brett. Brett might be running a little bit late, um, but uh, Debbie, awesome job. Uh, we, we we were talking a lot this week. You did awesome. So uh, why don't we go ahead and kind of go over your numbers? How did you do? I I'm just very excited, Scott. I attended several dial teams uh, last week. Those are amazing. Got some really great feedback from those. I made 252 dials. I spoke with 45 people and set 16 appointments last week. Um, 10 showed up um, and I was, Scott, I was so nervous, but you know, I called you like you, like you had asked me to for help and, and you helped me with those appointments, asked, answered my questions. I wrote six applications uh, for $6,133 in premium. <laughs> was, that is awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, well, you know, hey, you know what? This also, I don't know if you know this or not. We didn't talk about this, but this actually bumps you up to season new agent. So you're on your Fantastic. second level there of leadership. So great job. But I don't know if I told you this, Scott, but out of one of those appointments, I actually did a table recruit. She was looking for a job. We were, ha- I felt great rapport with her um, and, and I recruited her. So I want to going to set up a three-way conversation with you uh, this week to, to meet her. I'm super oh, that's excited. awesome. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait. That sounds good. Awesome. And I uh, see so you hopped on a dial team. Yeah, that's that's good. awesome. Good stuff. How'd you like the dial team? Oh, those were great. It, it, it gave me a lot of information. Yes. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, Steve, 
how'd you do, buddy? Uh, we, we, well, once again, we talked quite a bit, um, I guess, near the end of the week. Yeah, you know, overall pretty good, Scott. You know, 155 dials, 31 contacts. You know, I set 10 appointments, but I, I don't know. I had a lot of no-shows. I don't know. I, I don't understand. They, they said they were going to be there, but I dialed into Zoom and they weren't there. But, but I did end up sitting with four people. That was good. And actually, I wrote my first app. For uh, 1322 and APV. So that, that was really exciting. So that was awesome. So. Nice. Two new writers. Super excited for you guys. Hey, we're getting the business off the ground. We're going to kind of work a little bit on um, some, some of those uh, no shows. Uh, actually, hang up. Brett, this might be uh, Brett. He might be trying to get on. Looks like he's texting me here. Hang on one second. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, Brett, it looks like Brett's not going to make it here. Um, so, uh, but anyway, great job to you guys uh, for showing up. Um, all right, so that's uh, that completes uh, this week's review. So, you know, our our job. Um, one of the things I want to kind of mention to you, going kind of going back to the re, uh, first the key to successful week, following the system, looking at uh, you, you know, I would say the one thing I just kind of question, question and it could be a vulnerability thing or. You know, I'm not really sure what's going on there, Steve, but I noticed um, on the team thread, you weren't posting your numbers and I, did, I noticed you didn't text them to me. Any particular thing going on there? Yeah, you, you, you know, Scott, um, like I said, I, I, had, I had a lot of no-shows and I kind of really wasn't in a good headspace. And then I was doing some dials and then that wasn't going well. And, you know, then I, I, then I honestly, I stopped dialing, didn't have the, the activity I wanted to. And you know, I kept on seeing Debbie post all these incredible numbers and just trying to compete with Debbie. You just, you know, I just kind of said, you know, I, I need a break. So I just yeah. kind of shut down a little bit. Well, and kind of, I, I just want you to kind of understand that the, it's not really a competition, right? It's, it's kind of more of an accountability thing, you know, and I, I will say from a coaching standpoint, it's not necessarily designed, you know, for you to kind of like keep pace with the Joneses. But what it does help me do as a mentor is it helps me kind of see your, your, your activity level. And if something looks a little bit off, like I know in this particular case, you started on one A and A1 and A2 leads. I know that if your numbers were off, like say, you know, you threw up there 31 appointments, uh, 31 contacts and three appointments uh, scheduled, I would know that there was something that probably is a mechanical problem. Is it a metrical problem or a mechanical problem? Here in that particular case, that would be more of a mechanical problem that I can help with. It's not the metrics, okay? So I will say this, and, you know, I can help you with the no-shows, but I kind of, it, it does help me once again with that communication lines um, to let me know what's happening there. So I would just try this, this week, this week, um, uh, when, when are you dialing next? Yeah, I'm going to dial at uh, 5, 5 p.m. tonight. Okay, so let's touch base at 7 o'clock and we'll just discuss your DCAs if you're not comfortable texting them over. And let's kind of see how things are going and see how I can help you, okay? Sounds fair. Thanks. Okay, awesome. All right, well, let's, we're going to get back together. Um, so today, what I what would like you guys to do is just go ahead and then start, um, you know, seeing what's out there and op, let's, let's see what leads we can get. Debbie, you and I are going to probably have a discussion here pretty soon about getting a GMR turned on. I haven't really talked to you much about that, but we will talk about that soon. So I appreciate all you guys plugging in. Looking forward to getting back to you guys and seeing how you do next week. Good job, guys. All right, see you all later. Um, one of the things I, I, I really like to do um, is when I'm working with folks is once again, I don't really kind of want to let them know what's in it for, for me, but what's in it for them. So th on this approach, when I'm working with Steve, I'm asking him um, why, you know, wh why, and sometimes it, he was vulnerable enough to tell me, he was like, hey, look, I kind of feel like I'm in competition. I want to post my DCAs. But in this particular case, 
I want to let him know how this can help me help him. So he sees what's in it for him. And it's and and so if he wants to do this in a different way, let's try it that way. And then he might start getting into the rhythm if we um, if, if he's able to kind of share that with me uh, getting started. So. All right. Well, let's see you here. Um, if the folks are hopping back on here. All right. What do we got here? We got Steve back on. We got Debbie. Oh, there's Brett. How you doing, Brett? All right. He's waving at me. And uh, it's waiting on Debbie here. Okay. Oh, there she is. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad that you guys are back here. Uh, week number two. Man, you, you guys are, man, it's like this is a class. The class of 2021 is rocking. I'm really excited about you guys. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I know uh, you guys have been calling from the home, doing a lot of game planning. Uh, Debbie, let's get started with you. Let's see, um, what, how did the week go? It went really well, Scott. Um, remember that, that table recruit that I talked to you about? Well, I invited her to a conference call and she absolutely loved it. She's filling out an application and she's gonna be ready to go into a, a pre-licensing course. Um, we talked about, so I went ahead and created a free Facebook ad last week and within an hour, I had five responses to that post. Um, so I, we're going to get together so we can set up some interview, first interviews so you can help me with that. Uh, I printed out the four cornerstones and the four keys to, to a successful week. So I have that posted on my, in my office so I can see that and review it um, as I'm continuing to learn that. I'm just keeping up with my activities, just like you asked me to do, my dialing every day. Um, last week, I made $6,403 in APV. I'm really excited. I'm starting to get paid from, from the week before, so that's, you know, that's cool. Um, I got the book, Go For No, that you recommended me to start to read. Oh, and I filled out that GMR uh, that, so that I can start getting some A leads. Oh, yeah. Hey, Brett, how you doing? Yeah, I just got some dishes going on here. But hey, Debbie was talking about like uh, GMR. Is that the really expensive lead you guys been talking about? Like, well, what are those like 30, 40 dollars like a person? You know, my, well, my mom told me money doesn't grow on trees. You're not supposed to spend money like that. So I just wasn't really sure if that's what she's doing. That just seems very expensive to me, Scott. So um, can you well, let me know about that? It's, it's, it's one of the ways to look at it, Brett, but here's the thing is she's building up a pipeline. She started her first week with six applications. So she's building up that pipeline. She's been, and she was working on her craft, working on bonus leads, leads that were in the inventory that had been worked. And now she's feeling more comfortable. So now she's starting to share the marketing with Symmetry and she's investing. And she's basically, you know, in, in a lot of ways here, buying back her time. So she knows that if she contacts 10 people, she's going to have eight appointments versus the bonus leads, but now she's skilled to the point where she can do it. Anyway, that's, that's one way of looking at Brett. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I think um, I'm just going to stick to the quarter ones. You know, everyone's got a quarter. So, you know, quarter, maybe the 50 centers, do a okay. couple of those. Yeah. You know, well, so well, you yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. You know, we'll kind of get you dialing here. Um, yeah, that's awesome that you're starting to read, Debbie. That's, that's super cool. Um, so really excited about you building that pipe, pipeline. Uh, Steve, man, how did it go? Second week, seeing the yeah, uh, pretty good week, you know. Uh, you know, four apps, three thousand eight hundred and eighty-two in APV, so that was really awesome. But you know, again, made it, made a, made made some appointments. These people said they were going to be there. I don't know. I did Zoom. They didn't show up. I I, I had a couple phone calls. They didn't show up. I even drove my first in home, and they didn't show up. So I don't know what's going on there. And, uh, you know, I, I know when last time we, we, we spoke, you know, you recommended a book and, uh, you know, I did buy the book. I just didn't get a chance to really kind of dive into it yet. I mean, it looks really cool. The cover is really cool and all that. Uh, so it's on my to-do list. Got it. Okay. Well, you know, let's, let's, let me uh, explore now that we have Debbie here in the same, same call, Debbie, you've been on your, uh, dial teams. Uh, I, you, your, your sit rate is about 70%, which, uh, is, is good for, you know, definitely good for beginning here. And then we're looking at Steve that has a lower sit rate. Um, what do you think some of the things are that are kind of attributing to your, your, show, your shows? Well, definitely with um, having stronger language in my lockdown and being more comfortable with that, listening to some of the other pros that are on the dial team, lockdown, their appointments have, have really helped me. 
uh, with, with my lockdown specifically. So it's just those little tweaks that really made a huge difference in my show ratios with the lockdown. Any particular lockdown that you like? Yeah, so the one that I'm using right now is um, I'm, I am looking for a time for you to really commit to. I help about 10 to 15 families a week and I'd really love to find a time that really works for you um, because it could really take away from another family that's really needing to, to speak with me. So are you sure that the six o'clock is a good time for you? And I, I just love that. that. Commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, here's another one too, and you might like this. Um, you know, after you, I set my appointment, I just ask them, I say, hey, there's two different types of clients that I work with. One that needs a lot of reminders. And then I have another group that just want one reminder and then they show up. What would you say? What category do you think you fall in? I just want to make sure I'm prepared. And then let them answer. And then I'm going to go ahead and work, uh, work with that. Um, so oh, those are really good. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah, good stuff. I would say try try incorporating those in um, and then, you know, uh, let's see how that works out for you. Um, but anyway, you're keeping the ball rolling. You're getting things moving. You're on your way to season new agent, too, which is awesome. Um, so good stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, um, let's see. And then uh, how uh, how are you doing with your um, would you say your activity level? Um, you know, resources, activity, system, schedule. How How's your resources and activity looking? Yeah, you, you know, uh, that's my activity. A lot, you know, a lot of activity. Resources, I, you know, I'm not reaching everybody. So I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of working on those leads and, you know, okay. I want to get through them. And then, and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll look to invest, you know, maybe next week in some additional leads. Okay, so, well, we'll talk more about that. And then uh, Brett, uh, hey man, yeah, hey buddy. Yes, is it my turn? Yeah. How you okay, done, yeah. but... No, because this is really important. I don't know if Debbie and uh, Steve recognize this, but that script needs revamping, Scott. I don't know if you got my text from, I think it was last week, but um, seriously, Scott, I, I, you know, it's a good script. You know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of commas that are missing in there between paragraphs, no semicolons, um, run on sentences, not enough period. You know, it's, there's a lot of work that that script needs. I don't know how people, I don't know how Steve and Deb, they're like miracle workers to call a script without the commas and the, and the appropriate punctuation. So Scott, I've been, you'd be proud. I've been pulling all nighters, um, you know, working two in the morning, going through that script, um, simplified issue. No one knows what that means. Come on. You know, I got to really teach people what that means on the phone. You know, it's important. It's really important. So uh, I'm almost ready to dial. Give me a couple of weeks here. You know, we'll get back together. You'll be super proud. I'll have three times the numbers that everyone has here. They're doing okay. Well, here, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me give you some, a little bit of coaching on the script itself. You know, so here's the thing is the, the system works. Scott, 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 I don't mean to interrupt. I do have, I really have another appointment. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, I, I scheduled at 2.30 to go over the script. You, you know, I got to stick to my calendar like you've, you've mentioned to me. So I have script time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll. But um, thank you very much. This was great. All right. Well, uh, hey, look, Debbie, Steve, you guys are really following the system. You know, we're gonna make some little tweaks as time goes on. It's massive action, constant correction. We're gonna work on that. You know, let's work on those lockdowns, Steve. You know, the thing is, and you guys know, you guys are following the system. The script works. You know, we've seen this happen time and time again. So we don't want to tweak anything. So. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. We're going to look at some leads. Debbie, great job putting in that GMR. I got everything signed. I got it submitted. So uh, we're, we're moving right along. So great work, guys. Looking forward to seeing you all next week. Take care. All right. Well, you know, uh, I, it's, it's one of those things where if we're, if we're working with somebody who wants to reinvent the wheel, a lot of times with that pioneer mindset, um, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's a matter of them failing on their own or, uh, and then eventually falling into the groove. And then sometimes it, sometimes it takes being humbled um, and it, they're either going to, they're either going to get humbled or they're going to quit because they can't follow the system. So one of the things I knew about coming into symmetry is I was coachable. I didn't know the system and I was ready to, ready to learn and listen. And that, those are the characteristics that we look for when we're hiring folks. So um, well, we're going to get these folks back in here. 
Um, all right, looks like they're starting to show up to the uh, meeting here. And uh, for our third week, you guys are just rolling. Man, this is just like a steamroller here. You guys are just moving along. Uh, looks like somebody's fired up there, but uh, hey, let's, um, man, we, we need to get to some numbers here. I'm so excited about you guys. Uh, Debbie, we're going we're gonna to start with you. Okay. I'm fired up. Yeah, so I've been working really hard. Um, I've been really focused on that slingshot bonus, uh, keeping my activity and my production up. Looks like I'm on pace for that. So I'm really excited about that. Um, last week, my I made $5,921 in APV. I'm really Ooh. seeing those, yeah, I'm really seeing those ACH deposits going into my account. That's super exciting. Um, oh, I got my first batch of A leads. Uh, so I'm working those. Hey, for my Facebook post, I enrolled two new agents into pre-licensing and they are fired up. That's uh, awesome. Oh, yeah. and one last thing is I signed up for that debt-free life training that uh, you had recommended me do. Um, so I'm all set up for that. I'm really excited, you know, becoming a holistic agent and you're adding on those little dimensions as you go. So that's, that's super cool. So I'm really fired up for you. Cool okay. stuff. Steve, how's it going, buddy? Hey Scott, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm um, I'm getting a little frustrated. You know, it, this 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 is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And I mean, I had 25, 35 in APV this week, but uh, you know, some more no shows. And and then I got to like these think about it. You know, you present you present all the the different options, and they're like, uh, I'll get back to you, or I'll think about it, and then you don't hear from them. So I, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just my, in a bad place right now, but uh, I guess I'll snap out of it or something like that. Well, the symmetry blueprint now, and, and this is okay. This is correctable. This is something that, you know, that you got to be willing to want to work a little bit harder to get better at. So here's the thing. If it's a long term where we're seeing something happen over the long term and we're not, we're seeing a flat line or, or maybe numbers decreasing, a lot of times it's a four cornerstones approach and we need to, we need to evaluate the four cornerstones. If you have a bad week here and there, a lot of times that comes back to the four keys to a successful week if there's something that needs to be fixed. So first of all, let's talk about, you had mentioned this a little bit last week, is you're seeing, you, you, you're, you're kind of using like resources, activity, system, schedule. Let's address that first. So the resources that you're getting, are you adding new resources every week along with your activity? I know we talked about it last week and not every week, you know, I'm still trying to close out some of some of those other leads, but I, I hear you. I, I know I need to do that. So. Okay. So here, you know, the thing is like, if you, if you had a supermarket, right, you're not going to wait until you're out of milk to make an order to put more in. Right. So what you're doing is you're kind of starving your business. You're, you're by attrition here. So you want to make sure you're adding fresh resources, start with those new resources every week, and then work your way down through that stack to try to get some closure on the older leads. But you always want to ask, add new resources. Now let's talk about the um, four keys, uh, the four cornerstones, sorry. So like, think, think about the four cornerstones. What do you think out of belief, massive action, and it sounds like you're doing a lot of activity, commitment to ongoing self-improvement and associating. What do you think, what, what are you not connecting with on the four cornerstones? You know, looking at this, uh, I would say it's the uh, ongoing self-improvement. You know, I, I come from a W-2 marketing background and, you know, we, we talked about self-improvement. We would have like a, a seminar once a year, but like I might have read maybe three books in the last two years. And, you know, so I, I know you recommended uh, some books to me and some podcasts and, you know, the, the sound clouds. Now I listen to a couple of them, but I, I think I just need to be more consistent and uh, just dedicate some time on myself. Yeah, well, you know, the thing, and I understand that, and you know, the, it's it's not major wholesale changes we need to make in this business. It's the small tweaks. And here's the thing is sometimes that part of it is like throwing fuel on, on a, a already burning fire, right? And you're putting in the massive action. You're doing two of the things. But the thing is, is like if you're, and if you're building a car, like if I were going down to uh, the dealership and I was building a car, one of the things I probably wouldn't do an upgrade on would be, uh, you know, I would want speed, performance, I want comfort, I want safety, reliability, all those things. Now, a new motor, you know, top of the line, this, top of the line, that, but we don't think about the windshield wipers, right? So if I had to use an analogy, the, the windshield wipers, you know, when your car 
is in a driving thunder thunderstorm, you're driving down the road, your car is completely useless without good windshield wipers. So investing in that self-improvement is kind of your windshield wipers. This is going to get you through. This is it, the space between your ears is going to be the most valuable thing for you to protect. So let's do this. Go ahead and just I want don't let's let's not try to break any records. Can you put in 10 pages? Uh, when when could you put in 10 pages today? Oh, I, I around before I do my dials, probably around four o'clock. Uh, you know, before I, I'm going to dial around five, so so about four o'clock. Let's let's meet up tonight around seven thirty or eight, eight o'clock, whichever those two times work for you. And let's yeah, just seven thirty would be good. First. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's just get together and talk chat about that a little bit. All right. Cool. Thanks so much, Scott. That's awesome. Absolutely. Look, Brett, you look like you've been busting out uh, from the scene. Man, thing. you know how to make a guy wait. Man, that anticipate. You got to get me to the front of the line next time, Scott. You know, after I tell you what I'm going to tell you, you got to get me on all the leaderboards here. Um, you know, I just wish there were more people on the Zoom line to actually hear what I'm going to share. Because this is, this is kind of crazy. So you ready? Is that your first appointment? First sale, baby. I Ooh. made a sale. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Man, Come on. I didn't, know you, I didn't even know you set an appointment. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Come on, Scotty. I'm not going to waste your time. I, mean, I don't need to call you. You're busy. You got things to do. I don't know. You know, you've just got stuff going on. I'm not going to call you. I did the research. You know, I put the script down. I finally made a call, did the research. Okay. Read all the agent guides. I was up till 3 30 in the morning. Those, those guides are long. You got to go through each page, highlighted them. I don't know why Google is not on the, uh, the quality website. Google's a great resource for insurance companies. Um, anyway, I did end up going, you'll be proud. I went with one of the symmetry companies, Transamerica, love them. I know everyone talks about Transamerica, this and that. I went with their fully underwritten product. Can you believe it? Fully underwritten, convertible, okay, medical exam. I didn't hear Debbie and Steve talking about medical exams. I did a medical exam, okay? I got a EKG I set them up for, blood, urine. I think well, they're doing you know, jobs now. But also, the, wait, wait, Scott, there's a rider, waiver of premium. They got to get a call just on the waiver of premium. That was incredible. My client loved the waiver of premium. I spent two and a half hours telling them about it. I'm so happy. Last thing here on the sale, Transamerica, the website wasn't working. Does that ever happen? I don't know. But I, there's another website, Moo, Mutual of Omaha. So they let me, Mutual of Omaha had the same question. So I just did the Transamerica on the Mutual of Omaha portal, um, printed it off, mailed it to them. So it's, it's all good. This is going to go great. I'm going to make you a lot of money. So you're welcome. And um, one other great thing, just give me one more, one more second here for the floor. I hired an agent, Scott. You know, Steve and Debbie didn't even talk about that. This is why I said I should get to the front of the line. I hired an agent. Um, they're in pre-licensing pre-licensing. I read all about that. You know, that took me another two days to learn about that on my own. Um, didn't waste your time and you're busy, Scott. But um, I told her your name. She knows your name. She knows we work together. I said, Scott Summers. I didn't have a middle name and um, she's really happy. And last thing, last thing, I'm sorry to take up all the time, but you know, this was a great week for me. Amazing week. Again, this should be talked about. Um, She's helping me retool the website. So the script is, like I said, it needed some punctuation, but the website, it's good. Don't get me wrong. That's years in the making, but there's a lot of psychological surveys about coloring. One of the color shades was off. So I went on this color spectrum and she's really good. Her name's Leslie. She's going to help me with the color scheme. So uh, we're going to work on that website there. So just a little coaching here, you know, Brett, I, I'm super excited about your first sale. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, but you know, Hey, like I would love to meet Leslie, you know? Uh, so if you got a quick second here, I just want to get, yeah, you yeah. You know, I, you thank you. Your, your acknowledgement means a lot. I got to hop, you know, we got the website. Leslie's waiting for me schedule, schedule, schedule. So I got the website to work on. You'll be proud though. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, Deb. Good job this week. I know you're happy for me too. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Well, um, guys, you know, I think, you know, the one thing that you guys are learning here is you're definitely doing things the right way, you know, and I'm really excited for you guys. You know, the thing is, is with game planning, you guys all came to me for your game planning uh, to get your business started. And those are, those are important things. You know, we don't want to send you down the wrong road. And a lot of times, 
uh, the, the fully underwritten applications. Now, sometimes, hey, it's, it's a necessary thing. We have to write those applications and those products are there, but they're not necessarily always in the best interest. Like when you look at placement ratio, uh, the fact that, you know, um, we, we have to jump through a lot of hoops and, um, you know, our simplified issue products with our core carriers is basically, you know, what we want to work with. And I see that you guys are doing that, getting business placed, getting them protected. Um, and then, you know, uh, edification is the big thing. And here's one the one thing I don't want to have happen is Brett's new agent is not edifying them, right? And so that's not duplicatable. If, if um, Kevin Purdy, all he did was when he brought me in, was just wanted to be the, the, the person, the man, and just kept me all, you know, in, in his little group and not let the symmetry do the heavy lifting, that's not a duplicatable business model, right? So bringing people in, showing people that we work as a team and letting, handing those people off to the system and the, your mentor, letting them, your growing up line, do the heavy lifting there. And, and also creating that edification in the team environment, you know, what, what we can do for them. So you guys are doing a lot of, a lot of the right things here. So um, really appreciate you guys working hard. So um, we will see you guys next week. And, um, you know, we uh, got, we got some leads. Let's get some, uh, get some activity in and uh, keep the ball rolling here. See y'all, see y'all soon.